underground and public parking sometimes. And then we don't have like, you know, you, if you ask them to include something like infrastructure, that that we would get involved in that fashion just because you want your infrastructure funded by the tax increment. But other than those three, then you just have to look at the project and say, is there a gap in financing? And is it worth us participating to get the use, I guess, as John's saying, that we want? But typically, you are correct. Those are the two biggies. The other one that I hear too often is affordable housing. So, oh, would, yeah, right, would we be willing for affordable housing? Would we, would the village kick an extra money? Um, or, you know, senior, I think we obviously have a lot of senior going on, but if, if we needed senior housing, this is something that we would do. So, is there, a, is there a gap in our housing market that we're looking to fill? Or, you know, other communities, employment based, like, you know, if we wanted to find a large employer, things like that. So, there's other users or types that you could also do it with or that could be in the right rate. Oh, under we have industrial that they use it a lot for that. Yes. It's not, but you're right, affordable housing, so for tax credit purposes, um, if we get a developer interested in building an affordable housing, six-story building, say, or whatever it may be, uh, in order to get the tax credits, um, they have on their application, it gives you more ranking if, you, if a municipality is participating. So okay. if, you, if you, then you- So we could set up a TID to participate? To just to yeah. say we're on board. So with you this. say like, well, and then they also go for other mechanisms. Yes, so that that is a way that it happens. And then you negotiate our investment. Right. But we can also, I mean, also we use it in terms of reducing density. On you know, because anybody can really afford. You know, you can build affordable housing, but how many stories do you have to go up to? make the numbers work and if that is above our code and we don't want to offer that type of variance then we have to look at is it in our best interest as a community to fill this gap and reduce bring those stories down so it's more in keeping with our so i see how what you i'm, I'm not clear how the staff would go about deciding that yes this is an initiative that we want to do because it's not just this committee it really is the board of trustees and whether or not they're willing to do that's correct mm -hmm. and so yeah, nobody wants to waste their time yeah. <laughs> right. i think that's the, the process to... staff is going to go is those steps i just didn't see them talking to the i think trustees. it's on this um, it said developers cda and community but to me it's the board of trustees mm -hmm. too. <laughs> is it, is it? Is. Yeah. If I could ask again a newbie question and and I'm also I'm not a planner, I, you know, but to me, this is a very black and white statement, but to me TIDs are about development and change. No TIDs, very little development, very little change. <laughs> on a grand scale, on a bigger scale. Um, and I know, you know, being out in the community and hearing people talk, there's a certain faction of people who want Shoreward to stay exactly the same, or not exactly, but very little change. And there's some people that are totally fine with huge change. You know, some people would be fine with a 10-story building being built on the corner of Oakland and the Capitol. <clears throat> it seems to me that's more the philosophical, philosophical question is, does the village want to encourage medium to large scale developments, which is basically why we would need a TID, or are we happy with just- And participate. And participate, because we feel like that's a good thing for the village and for the people who live here, or are we happy with just really tiny incremental changes of facade grants and people putting up awnings and changing windows and Little people. shops here and there, or, or you know. private development, like or private, North yeah. Shore Bank, or or, or, or private yes. development, right? But but it sounds like even a site like that, we're going to require significant parking underground unless we want a big surface lot. On, I know, mean the, on, um, on, 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 the, the new, new one where the church was. Oh, yeah, oh, that we didn't participate in. Oh right, mm -hmm. but that right. happened anyway. So yeah, the idea is some of the philosophy is I don't want. To but that to me right. that's incremental change. That's a tiny little. Thing. That's a, that's not a, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a different type of like, building, but it's not a, 
it was a small building replaced by another small building. So, are so you, we don't have office here. So that's I think that your philosophical question is is easier in another community because because you're getting the only thing that we'd really be considering here. I, I just don't. We're bedroom community is residential. If you're talking about a tower. You know, well, not a tower, yeah, but like I mean, a twelve-story building or something that's big, big scale. Yeah. And so I think just remember that, like, we don't have a really industrial, and we don't have a lot of commercial beyond. You know, the, there's no office development. Is what I'm trying to say. So really, what you're narrowing it down to now, we have our grocery store is residential. So are we Basically. willing to right? Are we willing to make big change? Do we want more zoning density? Code? Really? Right. So right. that's a zoning density. code issue. Right. Because otherwise, we can't do it anyways. You'd have to have the zoning. You have to. That's true. So. It shouldn't be that. Oh, sorry, it just shouldn't be that big of a discussion because I think we've narrowed it to like one thing. Well, I would say back to the agenda yep. of the action that we're asked yep. to take is um, I think both these initiatives are great places to start and I would like us to direct staff to move ahead and we can flesh out. I think these are good considerations yes, of how, um, I think the topic is really important and so then how far we drill down. And again, we, we ask staff what their pain points, maybe that's too strong a word, but you yeah. know, the areas of focus that they would like, and these were the two, so I think. And they both make sense. They were both on our priority And we list. can't do anything in, until we resolve these. Yes, <laughs> yes, so, I think so. Um, yeah. And I think to add, you know, I think the, the suggestions about yes. adding policy yes. and all that, yes. very closely with this is a great, and we'll sense. just determine what makes sense for yep. So just for clarification though, I am, I did, I want to make sure that I heard this clearly. I think that the group has voiced that there is a, an additional step one of the implement, implementation steps for execution, which is the question to the board, which is whether they want to pursue this initiative for you to go down this road. Because if there's a no to that question, then we don't proceed with the initiative. Yeah. I, I, I'm I think just, we and I'm have, asking. I'm not, I feel like I have to ask that question yeah. to the board. So that would be a first yeah. step rather yeah. than. Yeah. I okay. think it's the first, yeah. So um, then I guess between this meeting and next meeting, that's something that I would like to further explore mm -hmm. with Chairman Hammond and, and President Rosa because that's something that would need to occur very early in the timeline. Mm -hmm. um, and also occur during the um, prioritization of initiatives that the board's going to be doing with their annual visioning process, which happens in June. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can provide you with an update to that conversation at our June meeting as just the first deliverable on that mm -hmm. um, to see how between the two of them they want to approach the board to, to seek that answer. Right. You know, I. I don't know. I'm, that's conclude it. That's that. I, yeah. Is that, did you conclude that? I'm um, thinking on um, that. Yeah. You know, I guess I'm. I'm stepping back. I mean, I love to be in sync. You know, you get more done when you're in sync, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. However, the CDA is a separate body that was created, <laughs> and and so if we have a village board that does not support TID and TIF, it doesn't. I guess I would not want the CDA to be completely dormant. You know, it's kind of like um, maybe there's a sweet spot of, I'm not, you know, we still need to have that conversation. Um, but I don't know if the outcome of that conversation is necessarily a go or no go with the CDA because I think the CDA would still have a responsibility to be as knowledgeable and as aware and as realistic as possible without stopping what they are designed to do, which is to keep interests active. Well, so it's, it's really true, but... You don't want to be in diametrical right, opposition, and, and then, but well, there could be friendly. Remember, one yeah. of our issues in our list of, of concerns was how to be um, respectful and responsible to developers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and not giving mixed signals to mm -hmm. them and having, you know, spend thousands of dollars. Right. And then it's turned down at the at the board level because they're not interested. And that's just that gives Sherwood a really big black eye. Right. Um, right. 
And absolutely, yeah, that's you definitely don't want to do that. Right. But so I we agree, we're, we're, we're a development group, so it's it's a dilemma. And to me, we just need to see if the board, right, or at just, least the yeah, majority we'll of the board would support it. It doesn't have to be everybody, right. but at least the majority would be willing to consider proposals that yeah, include a TIF. Yeah, so definitely the first step, and, and then build in un, with the understanding that we would come back and mm -hmm. decide about next steps. Right. Can I ask, I have a little bit of concerns. For two years, we've been talking about housing. So I think by saying, I agree with Dan, or Trustee McKay, when we go to the board, there may be an appetite, what I hear, for one or another. For right. one or the other. So that might be good input. Mm -hmm. um, but I am concerned because when I knock on doors in the residential community, you know, in our community, 80% of our tax base, as we just heard, is residential. And we've not done one, you know, like we have done in the TIFs, but for affordable housing or for senior housing that's affordable with tax credits, or home repair loans, or we've just not really had that focus at all at CDA in my two years. And I, that's all I hear from the residents. So. If we, this doesn't reflect that, and I think we've had these conversations, we were going to hire the UWM, um, we were going to have that study for a housing market. So that's a real concern for me. If, if CDA, and I'll say it on the board too, but if CDA comes out again with TIF and commercial only, which is really these two, I'm really uncomfortable because, so anyways, just because these are the ones that are presented as the two, and I feel like they're going to, they would take a while, like they might take the entire year because they're very, you know, they're big. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's my only concern is that we've been, I have been as an elected official stating that we would be focusing somewhat on housing. Um, and maybe we can through these two initiatives. I just, it's not, it's not coming through as much because there's a housing on our wish list. There was a housing section when I got all excited about it and I just don't see it in these two. So that's my personal view, and, and it's only because I'm sharing it because I feel like I've heard from the residents um, that they do want commercial development, but that we've focused our energy there, and now we need to balance that a little bit. Can TIF or TED be used for those things? It can, yes. Things? Yep. Well, that's and part of the same conversation, maybe. Mm -hmm. you know, it could the, be. The that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. I think that these could could. Well, that, it seems that. like, though, that there's, what, three or four or five buckets where TIF falls into, and maybe that's the direction we need to see if we're on board together or not. You know, commercial, yes, no, maybe. Housing, yes, no, maybe. Right. Other other housing stock issue. I'm things, trying to guide yes, no, that conversation maybe. because it's not about the, the financing mechanism. It's about where do you want to focus your development as an organization here towards, like, it's almost use, like, or do we need big park, you know, some communities will say, their redevelopment, we need more public parking, and so the, with that value of use, that's what they determine, would they finance it, whether it's through TIF, whether it's through tax credit, you know, um, or do we need affordable housing, and if, if that, so it's more use space than what is the exact financing mechanism, that comes next, but if you're just trying to get consensus on, do we want to use TIF anymore? Well, maybe the when the, the topic is uh, approached and discussed with the, the Board of Trustees, it's the definition of what is tax increment financing so that they see it covers a broad range of areas. And I don't see any wording in, in our two initiatives that says anything about um, commercial or or housing, it just is TIF. And so maybe the issue is that the, the board doesn't yet see that TIF is a, it's, it's a big financing tool. It's not limited to whether or not you support a, a grocery store or, or a, you know, something that specific. And maybe that education would be really helpful. Do you see anything mutually exclusive? No, in fact, we purposely did not get specific in terms of type of development because right. we see many sites that would be, um, and that's why I guess why we focus more on sites and yes. where those would be versus mm -hmm. um, a specific type. Uh -huh. So, so we for can us, get there. Right, for us it was 
that's great to look at housing. We want to make sure that we look at all of the options and define what that would be because if not, we're not going to hear your receptiveness to each one. Right. If the appetite from the group is more to look at specific sites with housing, then we proceed off from there. But at least we created the template right. so that we have a baseline to work off of because, you know, it's just human nature, right? We'll be all focused in one direction and then someone's going to come in yes. left field and <laughs> start talking to us about something else. And so, um, from our perspective, we just want to have a, a, a good template to move and improve on moving forward, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and so then what can include all yes. in front of us here, mm -hmm. we can still get to the, all of this that we're discussing with these two. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and accomplish what we need to do to move forward in, in all those areas. So that's, that's great. great. Good, yeah. good question. Do you, and Mr. Chair, do you want um, a motion to approve these two initiatives? Mm -hmm. uh, from the yep. I will so move. Okay. Does that also include though including the first steps with the board? Please. Of asking the board if these are initiatives, if this is something that they want to pursue. Because I'm just I don't I know. think it does. Personally I feel like I need that right. direction or that question answered. No. Okay. All right. Then I'll include that as a step. And then my I next like the coordination. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I want to be on the same page. My next follow up will then be with Chairman Hammond and President Rosek to have that conversation in terms of how they want to move forward with that discussion yes. in the next one. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on that? Just to confirm it is including the discussion with the board, just to make sure we have that in. And then based on their response moving forward Correct. or not, or going back to relook at that. Yes. Right. Okay. And President Rosick, does this satisfy your concern that in good faith that would include a housing? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay. I know we have some people that have to uh, leave shortly. Um, the next item, item five, is Kensington Liquor um, considered declaring it uh, in default. Uh, and we discussed this a little bit at the last meeting. Um, staff provided the history of the communications, what's what's going on here. So I think they're looking for some direction on uh, the next steps and actually declaring it in default and uh, taking it down that path. So yeah. I don't do you have anything to add, or Mark, if you have anything? I just had a quick question. There was, and I looked through the minutes, or the, the notes, or memos, I didn't see any communication from Kensington Liquor. Have they responded at no. all? Okay. And what have we sent them, just letters, or? Well, I mean, obviously they get their monthly request to pay their loan obligations. Um, We've sent them correspondence when they're behind. We've cajoled them come license time, you know, for liquor licensing a couple of times. And um, you know, I've been down to the store myself looking to have a face to face a few times. And we just don't seem to be getting any traction as far as their. Your track record is making regular loan payments, and they're getting to the point now again that they're close to six months behind. So, do um, they meet the? I'm sorry, I didn't. I'm not sure I know where the, the actual documentation is, but they they meet the terms of default specifically with yes. respect to the agreement. Yes. Okay. In fact, one of those correspondents um, actually issued a default notice to them, and then the previous executive director. Um, kind of waved off pursuing that uh, from the legal collections of that. Uh, we've got proper security. Um, uh, as the applicant just tends to really oscillate on, you know, well, okay, maybe I'll make a couple payments here, try to get caught up a little, and then maybe a couple more in a couple months. And, and it's, it's just been it's a, not respectful of the program. Um, it's been a real challenge. <laughs> Mind. But they always pay, so I just want to be to date, right? So, because right. liquor licenses are every year, so what I'm hearing is the structure of the payments is not being followed, but the payments, if you look on an annual basis, are being made. 
Well, they're six months behind now, so I, I don't know if I can quite go that far. But it creates work for the village if um, you have any that chase them down. Well, the, but I, mean, I, I guess they, like I guess you have the, a program, people need to follow the rules. But this is lack of communication is, yeah. I mean, that that's just seems immature. I don't think they've always done. How long have we had this outstanding? I mean, just four years, four five years. Right. Years. Yeah, but I guess this is this is this is a technical question. And what is are they what specifically does mean? Are they specifically in, if they're specifically in default of the terms of the agreement? I, 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 I get it's a lot of work, but that, that is what it is to me. The, that's our that's our issue. If you're not but really, if, it, if you're specifically in default of the terms of the agreement, then I think we can proceed. Yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah. They're I just want to make sure. Yeah. But, because because the requirement the, the terms of the agreement require that they make payments. Timely payments. Timely payments. Does it yeah. does it define timely? Or does it say thirty timely? days? I believe I'd have to review that. But. Is there a way to? I'm okay. If they're in default, you can issue a default letter. But is there a way to say something like, "So it's a small business, personally, and you know, for, for media purposes, and just it wouldn't look great if we're in this big, you know, public fight with them if they're paying every year." Is there a way to restructure it so that if, for an example, or at least to have a conversation? Because I feel like if it's a small business and maybe they don't get chunks of money on a 30-day basis, I, maybe they do, I'm just saying I don't know. If if they could, if we could just at least talk to them and say, is it the structure of this loan? So we have a better understanding of why they're able to pay at the end of the year before they get their liquid, but not on a 30-day basis. So Sounds I don't like know they're that. not responding to yeah, the loan they're loan they're they're right? but who they have to pay. I mean, a lot of a lot of businesses will do that. They pay the Wi-Fi figure they can push us off and pay their vendors or whatever. Right. You know that. So that's that might was, be okay. And the only yeah. reason I ask that is because I, for my business, yeah, I have liability insurance, and right. every month I'm supposed to pay a certain amount, and some months I don't have it, and so you know I have to pay my staff. Right. Or I go to business. Mm -hmm. So then, but it, but at the end I pay it in big chunks, and so I'm just I'm just trying to relate real life, like. It's not our, this is not how we structure the program, but just before we would foreclose on a house, or I don't know what's our collateral, but is there a way to find out if it's just the structure that's causing the trouble? Because we're, if we can still collect our money, that's the best of both worlds. Um, we don't want to default the loan and right. pay out the money. Right. So sometimes that conversation is helpful if you're trying to be a community player with the, with the right, business. Right. And I know it's very valued here even though it's a liquor store, but it's been the village liquor store.